Hey, what's up everybody? Hammerheart Metal Reviews here once again, doing another discography countdown of one of my favorite bands. Today we are doing none other than the progressive death metal masters, Opeth. Oh, what can you say about Opeth? Their early career is the stuff of legends, almost unmatched. Those first five, six albums, absolutely amazing. They then changed their trajectory and are now not even really a metal band at all, kind of like a progressive folk band I guess you could say lots of different progressive and jazz elements I'm not a huge fan of their later output but I'm gonna review those albums anyways and include them all in my discography countdown so let's just get right into it count counting down from my least favorite to my favorite they have 13 studio albums so let's get right into it coming in at number 13 I have got Pale Communion like I said, I'm not a big fan of the later stage of their career. This is not metal at all. This is just like a progressive rock, progressive folk album. It's not really something I listen to too often. It's not the kind of Opeth I want to listen to. Eternal Rains Will Come is an alright song on here. But like I said, this just isn't something that really interests me that much. And that's why this album's coming in last. Coming in at number 12 is the most recent Incauda Venunium. However you say it, I do not know. It was cool that they kind of released this both in Swedish and English. Um, gave it a different spin, I suppose. But nonetheless, I'm still not a big fan of this. I, it's just not an album I really want to listen to. Heart and Hand is a pretty catchy song. But this just isn't my cup of tea. These albums, like the last one and this one, I would give like 6 out of 10. It's just not my style. I don't know. Maybe if you love these albums, let me know down below some songs I should really give another chance to. But I just don't listen to this all that often. Coming in at number 11 is Sorceress. Kind of the same thing. I do actually like this album a little bit better than the previous two. There's The songs are a little catchier. I like the song Era. The title track is good. But it's just the same kind of thing. Anything of their recent output just seems like a disappointment to me. I yearn for the days of the classic Opeth sound, and I don't think we're ever going to get that again. But nonetheless, this is an okay album. 6.5 out of 10. Now let's move it right along. Number 10, the last album of their newer era. This was actually the first one, kind of, Heritage. This was right after Watershed. Didn't really know that they were going a completely new direction. And it was okay. This is, I guess, a 7 out of 10. This has got The Devil's Orchard and The Lines in My Hand is a good song. But same kind of thing as the previous three albums that I talked about. Just not my cup of tea. Not what I'm looking for when I grab an Opeth album. And that's why these are just, these four albums are just not ones that I really come back to very often. But now let's get into the top nine. And this is where the quality stuff really starts. So coming in at number nine is Watershed. This was the last album that actually featured some screens. It was still considered kind of a metal album. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, more ballad -y songs and stuff, but it works on here because I like the contrast between the progressive death metal and the more clean singing songs. Like Opeth has always done that so well that I like the kind of opposites and it blends all of them to a nice sound. And this album is no exception. It's not quite on the level of some of the classics, but there's still some really fucking killer songs on here. The Lotus Eater is awesome with the fucking actual blast beats at the beginning. Even one of the ballads, Burden, absolutely amazing song. I absolutely love that song. It's killer stuff. Air Apparent is a really good song too. All in all, this is a pretty good album. Coming in at number eight. Although this is an all acoustic album, or not necessarily all acoustic, there's electric guitars on here, but all clean singing album, I do actually like it better than Watershed. I'm not just into Opeth because of the screams. I do love beautiful songs for what they are. And Damnation is a great fucking album. This kind of came out hand in hand with Deliverance, but this one was like the part B to the part A that was Deliverance, where that was maybe a heavier album. This is just focusing on the softer side, but it is beautiful and it's absolutely awesome. My favorite tracks on here are Window Pain, like that's a great riff. To Rid the Disease, the nice outro ending credits, just instrumental, but absolutely awesome. And although this is not a heavy album, I absolutely love it and it deserves a high spot on your list. Coming in at number seven is Ghost Reveries. This is a really killer album. His singing kind of changed into a, definitely a more radio friendly, I guess you could say. 
um, direction, but it works here. This is still a really good album and it's still got some really heavy parts too. The opening track, Ghost of Perdition, absolutely killer. I really love Beneath the Mire and actually one of my favorite tracks on the album is the completely clean singing Isolation Years that is the ending to this album. Absolutely gorgeous song. I love his vocals on here and it's just a really great album, but it's not quite in the top six. Top six is where it gets into the really killer stuff. Coming in at number six is Deliverance. Absolutely awesome. This is a 9 out of 10 album for me. It's not quite up to the standards of the first five albums, but it's pretty goddamn close. The, while the first five albums are all close to 10 out of 10s, this one is a little bit short of the mark, but not by much. This is still really killer. Wreath is absolutely amazing. I love Deliverance, that whole outro with the riff and the drums. Do, 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 do. That's my double kick sound, but absolutely amazing. And I actually love the ballad on here too, A Fair Judgment. Absolutely awesome. This is a great album. Don't dismiss it because it's not one of their early ones. This is still fucking great. But now into the top five, and this is where it gets really tough because all of these albums are very close to 10 out of 10, if not in fact 10 out of 10. There's not too many other bands that have just started their career with five straight up classic albums like this. For a while, Opeth was my favorite band because of these five albums. I don't consider them my favorite band anymore because of their later output and the disappointments that it is. But nonetheless, that does not take away from the accomplishment that these five albums were. And so let's just get into it. Let's see where I've got these. Coming in at number five, I've got the concept album Still Life. Absolutely awesome, could easily be higher on your list, could easily be higher on my list. It's just a classic, and the songs on here are amazing. The More, so heavy to start the album, and just awesome. Face of Melinda, nice little break from the heaviness in the middle of the album. And my favorite track, one of my favorite Opeth songs of all time, but easily my favorite song on Still Life, it's Godhead's Lament, or Lament. This is a very underrated song, not enough people talk about it, just absolutely amazing. I love the chorus in here when he goes to the clean singing and just the harmony of it. It's so good. And this could easily be higher on your list. But it's not higher on my list because I love the other four a little bit more. Coming in at number four is the debut, Orchid. What can you say about this? First time I heard this, I was like, whoa, I was floored. Just absolutely amazing, especially for a debut. The songs on here are just so long and proggy, but great too. It's almost got a more black metal feel to it is I wouldn't call it black metal it's still progressive death metal but definitely a blacker edge than the later output oh the best songs on here in the mist she was standing like a 13 minute epic to start the album how good is that under the weeping moon oh I love the intro to that and forest of october just those sad guitar tones that's so epic and his vocals on here both the harsh screams and the cleans are just so good and I absolutely love this album 10 out of 10. Coming in at number three is what's considered by many to be the classic album, Blackwater Park. And I also consider it to be a classic. It's just not my absolute favorite, but it is amazing. This is like the peak of progressive death metal. The Leper Affinity, absolutely amazing way to start the album. I love the, the ballad Harvest. Just a nice break in this too. And a couple of my favorite tracks on here are Bleak, Wow, what can you say about that song? And probably my favorite on the album is The Drapery Falls. Just the way that the progression of the guitar tones and the way the chorus comes in, the screaming and the clean singing, it's just like progressive death metal at its best. And this is just an amazing 10 out of 10 album. And I get the praise. I understand why people consider this the classic Opeth lineup and album. And definitely if you've never heard Blackwater Park, do yourself a favor and go check it out right now. But I've still got two albums ahead of that. Coming in at number two is their third album, My Arms, Your Hearse. This was actually the first Opeth album I heard, and I was instantly hooked. I could not believe what I was hearing. Just so much epic stuff on here. I love the guitar. I love his clean singing. I love his screams. I had never heard anything like this the first time I heard this album, and it just blew me away. April Ethereal, to start off like that after the little intro, Absolutely amazing. My favorite song on the album is When. So good. I love the last section of that song. Oh man, if you've heard it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When can you take me down this lane? 
never mind my singing. I just butchered that. I for forgot the words, but <laughs> you know the part I'm talking about. It's so good. Demon of the Fall is absolutely amazing. Such a heavy song. And I even love Credence, the little softer song on this album, but it's still needed. And they always have those touches on these albums. And it's absolutely amazing. And it almost made my number one, but I've got one album above it. It's the album that I have a poster of back here. I'm actually wearing the shirt to Morning Rise. What can I say about this album? It's only five tracks, but five epic tracks. It's so long, it's so good. This is their second album, and it's already like leaps and bounds ahead of Orchid, and it's just ahead of its time. The Night and the Silent Water, absolutely epic. And speaking of epic, the last two songs on here are my favorite like two closing tracks, possibly of an album of all time. Black Rose Immortal, 20 minutes of epicness. That song is just amazing. You can't touch it. Like that is just an epic song and it's so good. It's so long, so many different places it takes you. It goes from heavy to beautiful to nice and soft, back to heavy with those screams. Oh, so good. And then the closing track, no screaming in it, completely clean singing to bid you farewell. Possibly my favorite Opeth song of all time. Oh man, if I had to pick a song for like a funeral, that would be the one. To bid you farewell it's just so beautiful so amazing and this album is my favorite for a reason anyway let me know down below what's your favorite opeth album what's your least favorite do you like the later era of them am i completely off base if so tell me some songs to check out then maybe i'll give those albums a second chance but to me it's all about the early era for this band and i absolutely love it anyways give me a like give me a subscribe till next time hammerheart meta reviews out